This is Life in the 1900s Newspapers, where I read the actual words from vintage newspapers. Today's paper is from the 20s. I will be reading the Dodge City Daily Globe from Dodge City, Kansas, dated April 7, 1926. In the past, the newspaper was the main source of information. What did it take to get the newspaper out to millions of citizens? Here's a short film made in the 30s from the Chicago Tribune to show you just what it takes. Here is a lumberjack notching a tree on the side toward which he wishes it to fall. Next, he uses his saw on the opposite side. Then there's a shout of timber and the tree topples and crashes. The small branches, or slash, are trimmed off and later are burned. Otherwise, they would dry out and constitute an invitation to the deadliest enemy of the forest, fire. No one is permitted to smoke in the woods, and all about are fire guards. After the tree has been cut into four foot lengths and stacked, the logs are carefully examined and stamped by the inspectors, or scalers as they are called. Spruce trees, balsam, birch, poplar, and mountain ash abound in Tribune timberlands. But only spruce and balsam are cut, since they provide the best quality fibers for making newsprint paper. Pulp. There is no deviation from the highest standards throughout the mill to ensure a superior grade of strong white paper. Logs for the mechanical process are placed in a battery of grinders, each of which can transform 12 cords of wood into high grade pulp every 24 hours. The logs are forced under pressure against huge grindstones. Water flows over them continuously, and from the bottom of the machine issues a steady stream of pulp. At frequent intervals, samples are taken for analysis as a check on quality. Both mechanical and sulfite pulps are thoroughly combined in mixing tanks with chemicals to color and brighten the paper. The pulps are then beaten together, more water is added, and the mixture is pumped into the paper-making machine where it flows onto wire screens that form an endless belt. As it passes over the screens, the water drains off and the forward motion of the screens causes the pulp fibers to interlace and become paper. When the paper leaves the screens, it passes between two large rollers that squeeze out still more water. Then it goes through another series of rollers that squeeze and dry it further. Finally, it passes through 32 drying cylinders filled with live steam and covered with blankets to absorb any remaining moisture. The final touch is given by steel calendar rollers that polish the paper and give it a smoother finish. Next, it is rewound on steel spindles and wrapped in extra heavy paper made at the mill from the coarser fiber screened from the newsprint pulp. Paper, they're carefully unwrapped and inspected and rolled onto press room dollies. On an average weeknight, the presses consume more than 275 rolls, representing 458,000 pounds of newsprint paper. Watched for, laughed over, vital characters in the lives of readers are Tribune comics. Sometimes as light in humor, but more frequently drawn to focus attention on a civic or national problem, the editorial cartoon is given front page position by the Tribune. To make the engravings from which Tribune illustrations are printed, the pictures to be reproduced, whether drawings or photographs, are placed before a camera in the engraving room. The shutter is snapped and the image is recorded on a sensitized negative glass plate. The light from a flaming arc transfers the image to the zinc plate. After it has been powdered with dragon's blood and heated, the zinc plate is etched in an acid bath. Removed from the bath, the plate is washed and goes to the router, a man with a sure eye and a steady hand who cuts away excess metal. It is then mounted on a metal base. Now the engraving of the cartoon or strip or photograph is ready for proofing in order that the artist, the editors, the engravers, and all others concerned may inspect the finished product. Ah, the comics. Yes, one of the most important parts of the newspaper. Do you remember waiting impatiently for your father to finish the newspaper so you can read the comics? Let me know in the comments below. The newspaper funnies were so important to the kids of America that in the 1940s, when there was a newspaper strike, the mayor of New York read the comics to the kids over the radio. Over the radio, New York Mayor LaGuardia makes news himself by reading the Sunday comics. Ah, uh, here's Dick Tracy. 
Let's see what Dick Tracy is doing. Now, you remember, that we hear wet wash. Listen, baby, I know you're a maid at Van Hoosen's. I saw you there last week, and I know there's something phony about that dough. Now, when we get it, it's going to be 50-50. Okay? I'll try to read today's funnies as well as Mayor LaGuardia did. We'll start today with the newspaper comic, Mom and Pop. If you remember from my video a few days ago, little Amy unknowingly took a ride from strangers in their automobile. Mom and Pop, the crepe hanger. Mrs. Tight, have you seen Amy? She's been missing from home since last night. I saw her and Bowser playing down the street last evening about six o'clock. We've been sitting up all night and were worried to death. I should think you would be. Perhaps she fell in an open sewer or a manhole. Mercy, I never thought of that. And she may have fallen in the river and drowned. Or maybe she's been kidnapped. That's right. I'll call the police. She's eight years old and has dark hair and eyes and was wearing a blue dress. If you find any trace of her, call Garfield 8252W. And I also heard of some children digging a cave one time and it fell in and buried them alive. I won't hold you in suspense on this one. I'm going to go forward in the newspapers so you can hear what happens next. Poor Amy. Meanwhile, in a mansion on an isolated roadway, we find Amy well guarded by her abductors. But if it's too damp for me to play outside, why can't Bowser come in and play with me? Oh, he's so rough, he might break something. Here is a nice doll and buggy for you to play with. Here's a dish of fruit and some cakes for you to eat, and there's fresh milk in the icebox. But I'm not hungry or thirsty. Now, if you persist in being stubborn, I'll have to punish you. Why don't you play and enjoy yourself? Boo-hoo! I'm lonesome. I want my mom and my pop. I bet you knew it. Bowser to the rescue. Fearing Bowser's escape may lead to their capture, Amy's abductors are keeping him a prisoner in the basement dungeon. <coughs> Was I dreaming or did I hear Bowser barking outside? I heard it too, Mom. It is Bowser. Mom and Pop outwitted. Don't lose sight of Bowser. He's our only hope of finding Amy now. He's taking us to this old hut on your guard, men. We've got him this time. They've tracked us here. You've probably tipped off the bulls to our hiding place again. Into that boat, quick. The rescue. That was a narrow escape. Now for the swamps, and they'll never find us. No ransom, no kid, and that goes. Row faster, Joe, the boat is leaking. There they go. Help, we're sinking. Ye gods, and there's no boat to reach them. <coughs> Amy, my child, pop. So, it's Slippery Joe Kitchen again. Up to your old tricks, eh? Let's see what's playing at the movies. At the Crown Theater, The Lady Who Lied, a first national picture with Lewis Stone, Virginia Valley, Nita Naldi. Added features, Hot Sheiks. Matinee, 10 to 20 cents. Evening, 10 to 30 cents. <laughs> i 
thing I found her, it was something she said. She's got me walking on the tip of my toes and my hands on the side of my head. All of my troubles are mended. She's my needle and thread. She's got me walking on the tip of my toes and my hands on the side of my head. Oh, that wonderful smile. Oh, I fell from the start. You should listen a while to the thump, thumping of my poor old heart. We've got a wonderful future, one that's rosy and red. She's got me walking on the tip of my toes and my hands on the side of my head. Speaking of the arrangement in Chicago, over the question of taillights on horses, Charlie Mann of Osborne thinks the position seems fair enough. But in fly time, he asks, wouldn't there be a danger of the lights being switched out? Angelo Scott advises girls, who are proud of their pretty teeth, to do their kissing only when the auto is going less than 20 miles an hour. The last word in usable power. $935, the six sedan. Gravity balance does it, with a full 40 brake horsepower shot in a direct line from its low swung gravity balanced motor. Through to the rear wheels, this handsome big Overland Six delivers the biggest volume of actual usable power per pound weight of car ever achieved in any automobile of equal or nearly equal dimensions. E.E. E. Kelly noted that another woman has taken a shot at her husband but missed him. Kelly does not stop at that but says, about all some husbands are good for is to be shot at. And it is a pity that a course in domestic science does not call for at least two hours of target practice alternated with the use of a meat axe. <laughs> 